All right, everyone, so I got a pretty special fig for you guys. Uh, there's only four figs of my collection this year that are ripening in July. Um, last year, there was very few that um, ripened in July as well, but uh, it seems like any really early fig that I stick in the greenhouse, guys, like RDB, Hardy Chicago, Malta Black, LSU Champagne, LSU Tiger, LSU Purple, Improved Celeste, LSU O'Rourke, you know, a lot of the early, early varieties, guys, I could stick them in the greenhouse and get fruit in July. Uh, wake them up sometime in March with the heater, turn the heater on at, you know, um, only at nighttime temperatures, just to keep the nighttime temperatures high. And you got yourself figs that will ripen and put out figs very early in the greenhouse, shortly after waking up. You know, they wake up and then maybe two to three weeks later they've got little figlets on them and that's exactly what you're looking at here these fig trees to ripen uh, in July by July 1st they need to put on figlets by April 1st and to ripen by August 1st which is today but this fig tree has been ripening figs since about uh, the second week of July and uh, you know it's it's very early is what I'm trying to get at and even with the greenhouse Without a greenhouse, it would be very early. But you can see down in here, I didn't really want to have to pick this fig today. I wanted to be able to save this for my friend Matt's gathering and, and share this with people. But this is called Brandon Street Unknown. This is a fig that my friend Ben in Seattle, he also has a, a YouTube channel that he does fig videos on and has all kinds of crazy things going on in his backyard if you look at the the leaves of this tree which is very misleading guys um, it almost looks like a hardy Chicago type leaf it's got the the fuzz the roughness to the leaf that most hardy Chicago types do but it also looks a little different than your typical hardy Chicago type so I, I wasn't ready to jump ahead and you know serve judgment on this fig and I decided to buy one from Ben last uh, last spring I think it was so this tree is now two years old-ish it grew really well last year we even got an air layer on the tree um, it fruited for me really heavily last year you can see that this is the last of the earlier fruits where we have some now more a second crop of fruits coming on that will probably ripen in September uh, this tree actually took a hit in the greenhouse it, it put out fruit early on and then some of the trees didn't really get a chance to get watered because uh, it was so packed in there and Brandon Street Unknown was one of them and it, it dropped a couple of its earlier figs. So, this, But this is what we got. So let's pick that and that came right off. I, I would like to save this for my friend Matt's gathering. I think I started to say that. But um, I think this fig just could not go another, another day. It's just absolutely no way that I could leave this on the tree. Uh, it's Thursday and Matt's thing is on Saturday, so uh, it looks like right now it's actually starting to get spoiled and we definitely don't want that to happen. Let me put you guys down and I'll cut this open and I'll show you guys the fig here in a second. We've got bugs in the bag, you know, We've got all kinds of, um, looks like little ants, different things. That looks like an earwig of some kind eating the fig. <laughs> What's really cool about this fig, guys, is that it seems to hold, hold up to the moisture okay. It doesn't seem to be perfect, but um, you can see that there's a little bit of mold in here. Let me just check the camera to see if you guys can see that. So there's a little bit of mold right in there, and that's in the skin, like little indentations in the skin. I wonder if, because it's been so rainy here, lately it really has this fig I think has performed quite well a little bit of mold is, is not something for me to really worry about um, right before the fig molds that's when I want to pick this and you can see that there's like these little itty bitty crystals right in there I don't know if you guys can see that it's really difficult I'm sure to see but you have to just take my word for it there's little crystals, and I think that's sugar. Maybe that's a part of the fig, but when figs start to shrivel up like this, you can see it's starting to somewhat shrivel and dry up on the tree. 
this is when I like to pick my figs. I like to pick them in dry, dry conditions in high heat, which is kind of what we've had. But uh, lately, we've been getting a lot of um, a lot of rain. But overall, this fig seemed to hold up to the rain quite well and still has the ability to semi-dry on the tree. So this is the fig, I guess, a different angle, different shot. It's got a long neck. Definitely not a hardy Chicago, if you ask me, at least in looks. It, it looks quite different. Uh, the eye is pretty closed, and the bugs are just starting to eat at the skin in different locations than the eye. Let me cut this one open. Hope the camera's not getting too hot in this location. I may have to move us. So yeah, here's the fig, guys. It's uh, pretty reminiscent of what it looked like last year. You can see that the interior is not that dark. Uh, it's quite, quite light similar to my suwadi which in my mind has a light berry flavor and I'm betting that this one also does as well I'm gonna get a different angle here we're gonna sit in the shade a little bit to kind of cool the camera down I don't want this video to cut out so we're gonna sit in the shade here and you can see maybe it better colors in the fig here I'm not too sure what you guys are getting but that's the fig and in my mind, it's actually quite dark compared to what it normally is. You have to let this fig ripen for a long time, I think, to develop the full flavor that it's going to give me right now. I'm really excited because I've never tried this fig at this stage before. You know, you can start to see there, it looks like they're starting to get some honey in there. Right around the edges, you know, is the skin, but then right inside the skin is like a darker pigmentation to the to the flesh and that almost reminds me of a brava how some bravas get that purplish exterior to the to the flesh and it, it's just a weird phenomenon but this one looks like it's starting starting for that to happen let me um let me bite into this before we talk more about the fig i think that's probably a better way to go It's quite good. It's quite good. It's approaching um, Hardy Chicago intensity. I would say there's a nice berry flavor in here that's quite present. Not as a light berry flavor as something like Suwati, which you can obviously see. This is going to have a light berry flavor because of the color, right? It's a light red approaching dark red. But as soon as you get a light red color, there will be some kind of berry flavor present within the fig. And uh, this one's no exception. Very sweet. Overall, a good fig. I wouldn't say that this is a phenomenal variety. I would, I would probably give this one an 8 out of 10. This, to me, tastes like a hearty Chicago that's pretty well ripened, uh, but it's different than Hardy Chicago. It's not exactly the same. It's got a lot of muskiness to it. It's got a weird, really a weird flavor in there. I can't really put my finger on it. I've never tasted anything like that, I think. It's a really weird, more interesting style of fig, right? I really like the light berry figs for many, many reasons. You can eat a lot of them. They're also just very refreshing to eat, and they have some intensity to them. You're not, they're not too intense. They're usually not too sweet. They're usually not too, too this or too that. You really get a chance to have a mellow flavor where you can really depict all of the flavors within the fig, and I think this one has some weird weirdness going on. I, I don't know exactly how to say it, but there seems to be a lot of sugar in there. There seems to be some honey flavor, and there also seems to be some interesting berry that's similar to a hearty Chicago, but not. And um, overall, it seems packaged like a hearty Chicago. It seems to perform like a hearty Chicago. It's definitely not a hearty Chicago. 
don't 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 make uh don't think I'm misleading you here or don't be misled here uh, it's definitely 100% different than Hardy Chicago but it reminds me so much of the fruit um, in terms of what it looks like in terms of the skin I mean even the the consistency and the uh, the texture it's very jammy right it's a very jammy fig there's something about it though that's just very interesting that I've never had never tasted it within a fig. It's so weird. Um, and I wonder, I wonder what that is. But it's a really good tasting fig. I have to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, that's a really well ripened fig. I've never had one that ripe before, like I said. Uh, I do think, however, that this fig is very closely related to Taramo Unknown. And I think it's also very closely related to uh, a fig called Nebo, which is an Italian variety that uh, a lot of Michigan growers up in Michigan, there's a whole community of them that are growing figs that I talk to on a pretty consistent basis, and those guys have a fig that they rave about all the time, being being quite an early choice called Nebo, and uh, I think the three of them are either the same or very, very closely related, and I think personally it's a fig you want. I mean, if you're a collector, I think this is a fig you're going to want in terms of, uh, you know, just just an, another edition of another early variety. This is definitely an early variety. I can't speak on the hardiness. It seems quite productive. Even at a young age, it was very productive. So, I don't know. I'm all for the all for the Brandon Street Unknown, and I think Ben found a really good fig. Um, that I hope gets more traction in the community because this is not your typical typical fig. It's, it does have some differences in terms of flavor compared to some other varieties uh, that would ripen a, a, around this time, right? So for me, I think it's a keeper, and I think uh, you know if you're a collector, I think you should get one. So and you live in this area, you know. I'm not sure if you should get one and you live in California, but if you live you know, along the East Coast, you live in Pacific Northwest, I think this is probably a fig that's going to do well for you. But anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching this little snippet of uh, Brandon Street Unknown. I, I'm sure I could go into much more detail. That's probably not coming to me right now. I know Ben has lots of videos on this fig, so if you want to check out his reviews of this fig, go and do that. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty hard to find fig. I know Ben sells it. But um, I'm sure it's going to travel more around in the community and more people are going to have it. So, yeah, hit tap, hit hats off to Ben, and I'll talk to you all later. Uh, take care, guys.